Hello, I'm Michael and in today's video we're going to focus on focus stacking workflows in Helicon Focus. If you remember, a few weeks ago I already did a video on Helicon Focus where I compared it to the automatic stacking algorithms in Photoshop and also to the manual blending you can do in Photoshop using masks. Today I want to go a bit deeper and show you how you can combine exposure blending with focus stacking when using Helicon Focus. And yeah, that's quite a typical example or a typical workflow because many of the photos I take, I also have to do exposure blending. This is especially true for scenic landscapes, wide vistas, where you have a colorful sky in the background, which is usually a bit brighter than the foreground. But it's also true for woodland photos. And while I don't have to do bracketing or yeah, exposure blending for all the images in the stack, it's mostly just for the image in the background. This is where the sky intrudes into the frame and this is where I have to do exposure blending. So the whole workflow is a bit simplified by that. And I'm now gonna show you how I do this for a woodland photo, which I took in Costa Rica, where I have such a use case, where in the background, the sky was a little bit too bright. So I had to do bracketing there. And then I took the focus stacked image. So the stack from foreground to background. And I now put everything together and show you how I do it. So here's the photo I want to blend. And as you can see, it's a typical woodland scene from Costa Rica where we have some soft mist in the background. And I already applied the raw processing. So you see here for the bright frame, I brought down the exposure a bit because otherwise it would be too bright. So I reduced it a bit to get it closer to the darker frames or to the other frames which I use for the focus stacking. I brought up the shadows, brought down the highlights, brought up the blacks, basically to counter the reduction in the exposure. I used a bit of dehaze, but basically reducing it, which gives woodland photos a more dreamy look. And what I also did, my typical settings for sharpening, reducing the sharpening to an amount less than 20. I bring down the radius to 0.5 and add some masking. And also very important, are the lens corrections. I have them active here, removal of chromatic aberration and the profile corrections. So that's the settings which I then synced over the complete stack. So first of all, here are the three bracketed exposures and you see here for the normal one, I brought it up a bit. So those two here, the blending will be much simpler if I equalize the exposures a bit in Lightroom already. Also here for the very dark exposure, I brought it up by two. And the reason I did bracketing here is this area up here in the corner where the sky or the light is bleeding into the canopy of leaves here. And yeah, this is a little bit distracting because it's at the edge of the frame. That's why I did bracketing. So getting this shot here and also the dark shot, which I will most likely use exclusively for this area. So after taking this bracketed exposure for the background, so I was focused somewhere here at this tree branch, I went in and activated the automatic focus stacking on the Canon R5. And you see here also the mist has moved away a bit. But that's fine because this here is all background area. So I'll use this exposure, which still has the mist. So here for this photo, I then focused at the very close foreground. So those leaves here activated the automatic focus bracketing on the R5. And I have a couple of videos and also an article on how to do that. And then let it run through its automatic stacking. So taking a series of photos, in this case, it was six photos where the last photo here is again focused at the background. So if we go here to this area, this is where it's focused. And you see also here, the highlights are a little too bright. So the objective now is to first do the exposure blending, which I find is easier. You just have one series here, which you need to blend or which I need to blend. And then I can use the exposure blended image together with the images I performed the automatic stacking on and pull them into Helicon Focus. For some images, especially architecture, what you could do for the bracketed exposures, you could just go to Photo, Photo Merge, HDR. And this works pretty well for photos where you don't have any moving elements. And architecture is a good example where I use this. But in this case, I want to have more control. I want to do this in Photoshop. 
So I would just right click, go to edit in and open it as layers in Photoshop. Now that we have all the layers in Photoshop, you see here the bright layers at the bottom. Then we have the normal exposure and the dark exposure. What I will do first, I'll apply a black mask, holding down Alt and clicking on the mask icon to the dark exposure and also to the middle exposure. So as a base, I want to use the bright exposure because this one contains least amount of noise in those darker areas. And I will not bother with the use of luminosity masks yet when I blend in this normal exposure. I will be a bit rough just using a 100% brush and drawing in around those areas where it's a bit too bright, this area and also up here, this area. That's fine because the Canon R5 has enough quality to allow me to as I showed, bring up the exposure a bit in the normal image, which allows me to blend it very easily by just drawing in the mask. So let's move in a bit here in this area. So this blends very naturally. And sometimes it's even a better way to do this without any mask because otherwise you can get some washed out look on the image if you use the wrong masks and it's also much quicker. But feel free to use luminosity masks already in this stage. But especially for woodland photos, I prefer to just draw with a 100% brush, which also helps me to avoid any artifacts and areas where the leaves were moving. So I think for a start, this is okay. So let's have a look. That's the before and the after. And now here for the very dark area, I just want to get in up here. Again, I don't have any mask active. Let's just see if there's movement. So there is no movement at all. So for this here, I first use like 40% and bring in a little bit of the bright areas also here and go like 30% down here, also in this area. And now I'll finally also use some luminosity masks. So I go into Lumensia. I select L5 for the very bright tones. Uh, maybe even L4, press on select to load this into a selection. And now through the mask or through the selection, I will, with a white brush, reduce the highlights a bit more. And I want to be very careful, always looking close here to avoid any artifacts, because sometimes there is some movement, which I didn't notice previously, and there using the mask would create artifacts but for this image, it looks quite good. And let's look at the mask here. When I draw, you see how I draw through the selection and only the bright areas are affected. So let's finish this up quickly. Okay, I think that's good enough. We went from this image where we have quite a few blown out highlights. Then we went to this, which already looked better, to this final result where I can now flatten the layer. So this image here is already a TIFF, so I just press Ctrl S to save it. And then I can close Photoshop, head back to Lightroom, and ideally the TIFF will already be here, so automatically re-import it. So you see this was the bracketed exposures, and here we already have the blended image. If this doesn't work, just right click on the folder where you saved it and press on synchronize folder, but usually the integration with Photoshop works very well. Okay, so now the next step, since we now have this blended image for the background, I will select it together with the images of the automatic stacking. I will right click on them and then I go to export. And here we have the two options for Helicon Focus. In the last video I showed you the DNG option. Since we now have a TIFF file for the blended image, we need to go with the TIFF workflow. So I click on Helicon Focus TIFF, which brings over all those images into Helicon Focus. Now in Helicon Focus here on the right side, we see the source images, which include here this edit and we can skip through them. So you see all the images and we're also what we see up here on this tab currently in the rendering module. So rendering the stack is the first step. First, we need to have Helicon Focus align the images, which happens automatically during the rendering, and then select which areas are the sharpest. And I typically use down here, 
under the rendering methods the method B depth map. There's documentation on the Helicon site where they describe which method works for which images best. For me, I currently just found method P to work very well for the images I throw at it, so the woodland images, so I leave it. Down here we have the radius setting, so using a smaller radius can lead to sharper images, but it can also lead to halos and artifacts if you have much movement or for the intersections between some foreground and unsharp background. So to reduce those, you might sometimes need to use a higher radius. Same for the smoothing. If you go for a higher smoothing, there will be less artifacts. If you go for a lower smoothing, you can achieve a bit sharper results. I usually go with a smoothing of something between three and six. So let's go with a four here. And the radius stays between two and five for most of my images, which I have processed in Helicon Focus. But feel free to experiment. Also, when we now press render, the result will appear down here in this film strip. And if you're not satisfied, you can change the settings and render another preview, which will then also end up here. And then you can really compare. So you saw the rendering went very fast. And that's what I like about Helicon Focus. It's very quick to process my photos. The next step is now going to the retouching module. And this is now where it gets interesting. This is where I can now select manually which areas I want from which image. So on the left side, there's the source image I have currently selected. So if I skip through the images, for example, if I select here the edit photo, you see on the left side, that's the photo which I performed the exposure blending on. And here on the left side, that's the final stack. And you see, it appears that from this photo, nothing was taken over here because Helicon Focus made use mostly of those brighter images. So in the end, what I have to do now, I have to do a combination of what Helicon Focus rendering algorithm did and some manual retouching, where I want to decide which areas I want to use now from this blended exposure. And that's quite simple. So you see here, there's a brush or some brush settings, and I want to select a fairly big brush here. And for this image, I know that all this area up here this is the background area which I have sharpened this exposure blended photo. And you see already when I hover over this area, I get a preview how this would blend. And I just draw it over. So that's the nice thing. That's how retouching works. And you can focus. I can just draw over those areas. And I just do it with this big brush for the upper part. For the lower part, I have to be a bit more careful because here are also the areas where Helicon Focus did a great job on the stacking of those very close ferns here. And those I will definitely want to keep from the stacking results. So I don't want to just draw over it. So what I can do now, I can zoom in a bit more. So on those areas, and when I press space, I can move around here. And now I always check here the preview and I go in a little bit closer, 50%. And I can see if I want to have this area from the background. And I think I do, so I'll just draw it over because here, this is where I have the fork in the background and this looks quite nice. And yeah, this brush works very well. It also does some very good blending here, much better than what I could do in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna draw this in. Now, similar to the workflow I'd use in Photoshop, basically finding the line where I want to use the source here from this exposure blended image and then beneath that line I'm currently drawing I want to use whatever Helicon Focus rendered and yeah this is working pretty nice and it's pretty simple here in Helicon Focus because I also have this nice preview so I see for example here for this area this would not work very well so I'll just draw above it and what I also can do I can use this brush here. If I did some drawing already, I can remove it again and reword it back to the result that Helicon Focus did. So that's quite nice. So let's just remove what I did here because I messed it up a bit. And so I can really fine tune the blend. And now let's zoom out a bit, go back to the copy brush to fill out the rest. So now I said I just found the line. Let's show the depth map. And now what you see here, 
this is the line here. When I go to the steps map, basically this white part is what's taken over from this exposure blended image. So now what I have to do is just draw over the rest to fill in all the areas above that line. Similar to workflow I showed in Photoshop, but it's much more convenient and simpler here because I have this nice preview. So this source file on one side and the destination on the other. Let's just fill this up. So now I have quite a good start here. And now what I want to do is again deactivate the depth map, go in at 100% and yeah, double check the areas where I have the transition. Maybe I can move over a bit more, maybe down here. I think this might bring in too much of the unsharpness here. So I'll be careful, fill it up here. What you also can do if you click on this icon, you get a little preview. This helps to quickly navigate around because sometimes I move a bit too fast and you can lose the orientation. So this helps to show you where you're currently drawing. Let's finish up here and down here. I want to keep what Helicon did because this looks sharper. Can go to the X, to the removal brush and clean this up a bit. And also make it very soft because then I get a nice transition. This way the blend with the fog will look much better. And I really love how this works. So <laughs> this workflow is just so much more convenient than in Photoshop. So let's see what we do here. If we can make this a little smoother, also this area and move back to the copy brush. And up here, what I want to do now, I'll select the sharp image for the background and see if I want to bring over some details here in the branch. Because here you see this area was sharper. So let's rather take this and yeah, you are free to combine all those images. And I will take a bit more of the time now to really finish this up. But I think you now understood the principle. And once I'm done here with the retouching, I'm gonna show you the next steps. So now that I'm done with the retouching and satisfied with the result, I go here to the saving module and I press save output to image file. Now here I select TIFF. I'll select the same image, which was the blended one, but I call this one stacked and I save it. Once saving is finished, this dialog appears, which tells me that when I close Helicon Focus, the image will be automatically imported or re-imported into Lightroom. Same as we did previously with Photoshop, where we did the exposure blending. So that's what we're gonna do. Close Helicon Focus. And here we now have the stacked image as TIFF. So let's have a quick look. Zoom in on the image and you see that it's completely stacked. Down here, the corners, everything's sharp. And up here in the areas where I did the exposure blending, I have all the detail which I captured. So this is how I would combine exposure blending and focus stacking. I now have this TIFF here in Lightroom and whatever workflow you prefer, I could now go in and further adjust it in Lightroom. But what I like to do now, bring this over into Photoshop to apply the finishing touches. And I'm now gonna show you the final image and yeah, that's it for the video. Hope you liked it. Make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more. And also I have now activated the channel memberships. So there's a join button beneath the video. So if you want to influence the content of this channel a bit or just support me, you can think about joining, would be very appreciated. Anyways, hope you liked the video. See you in the next one. Bye.